Hello, Edward here. Let's take a look at controlling multi-cell fixtures on Flex S consoles. So I am running uh, Phantom Xeros, which allows you to emulate any console running Xeros uh, on a laptop or PC. Uh, and at the moment I'm emulating a Flex S48, as you can see here. Uh, but what we're gonna go through today is applicable to both Flex S48 and S24 as well. Top right of my screen, I'm running Capture Visualization software. Uh, and as you can see, my Flex S is currently controlling my capture file that I've got running here. So probably a good place to start, what do we mean by a multi-cell fixture? Well, a multi-cell fixture uh, is basically a single fixture that has multiple different light sources that you can control independently. So a good example of that are the LED buttons running along the back of my stage here. Uh, you can see that I've got these LED buttons, these vertical strips, each one has 10 pixels. And of course, those 10 pixels can be controlled individually. Um, so let's talk about what, what, what functionality that we've got available to us. First things first, if you want to control a multi-cell fixture, just like any fixture, you're going to need to patch it into your console. So to do that, we need to go and tap Setup, go into Setup, uh, and we can then go Add Fixtures. And we can then go and find your fixture you need. Now, depending on what fixture you find, you're going to see different things within Add Fixture. Um, I'm currently chosen a Strand Aurora 12. That is a 12-cell uh, LED fixture. Um, but as you can see in my mode column, there are actually multiple different ways you can operate that fixture in. And depending on what fixture you have, you're going to see different things. Um, but for example, this fixture you can operate in a 1, a 4, or actually a 12 cell mode. Now, once you've chosen the fixture you need and you've got it patched in, um, you can then, like you've always been able to in the fixture schedule, go and find your fixture. You can start to go and filter by your fixtures using the patch groups. Uh, there is actually a new patch group available. If you scroll all the way along the end, there will actually be a multi-cell patch group that allows you to see all of the multi-cell fixtures currently in your show file. Uh, I've got the SLE strips in my show file. Those are those LED buttons along the back of my stage. But I've also got um, some VL5s. Now, VL5 fixtures, they've got a main beam, but they also then have secondary LEDs around the front of the fixture, and therefore it's multi-cell, because it's got a main beam and also these additional LEDs. Uh, the VL800 event wash, uh, they are moving heads, they are a little move, moving head wash fixtures, uh, and they have seven LEDs. And you can actually control each of the seven LEDs of the wash fixture individually. And therefore, that is also a multi-cell fixture. So multi-cell fixtures, they come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Um, but the, 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 the kind of aim of the Xerox software is that it means that you can control whatever fixture you've got in a widely similar kind of way. If we go and take a look at our SLE strips specifically, um, like with other fixtures, like with moving lights that you might patch, fixtures have settings. Um, when it comes to multi-cell fixtures, um, you can go and click into the settings uh, cell for one of your fixtures. So let me say I want to go into the settings of fixture 26. You'll see here one of the options is cell order when you've got a multi-cell LED button fixture or just a, a generic button fixture. And that means if you've got, let's say, you know, eight LED buttons running along the back of your stage and someone has put one of them the wrong way round. So all of them are nice in order, sales one to ten, sales one to ten on each button going across. Maybe one, one of your buttons is actually ten through to one because it's been put physically the wrong way round on stage. Well, no matter. You can just go and find which one that is and then reverse the cell order and then that will then be reversed so that actually the cells are flipped. A uh, really good idea, just like you would with other fixture settings like pan and tilt alignment with your invert and swap, good idea to get this done first before you start doing any programming. So once you've got your fixtures patched in, and if necessary, you've reversed some cells around to make it all nice and work, uh, you can then exit setup. 
And you can then start to control your fixtures just like any normal fixture. So we can see that my SLE strips are on 24 onwards. Um, so I'm actually going to go and grab control, go to my channel faders, and I'm actually going to go and grab control of 26, 27, 28, and 29. Uh, let's zoom in on those. I'm actually going to click on one and, and focus in on it just so that we can see things a little bit easier. So once you've got your fixtures on, you can turn them on. And as you can see there, all of the cells in each of the fixture have come on together. If you just simply bring up fixture 26's fader, all of the outputs of fixture 26 will illuminate for you. So you can see all of those cells on. And when you've done that, you can go ahead. Choose a colour, whether it be a palette or use the colour picker, and you're going to be controlling the colour of all of those fixtures together. Um, so that's our LED patterns, and it's a similar thing with our multi-cell moving lights. So this time we're going to go and find our multi-cell moving lights, uh, which are our 20, 20 through to 23. So let's find those on our faders. That's these four fixtures here. And this time again, we can go and raise those. And you'll see here, these are the seven LEDs that I was talking about. You can just about see those there in the, in the light. You can see these seven LEDs. And if I go and choose the color, they will all change color together. That's just exactly what we saw happen with our patterns. However, there is a subtle difference when it comes to fanning. Now, by fanning, we mean selecting a bunch of lights, but then giving each of those lights their own different values. And a prime example of where you can do that is in the color picker, because you can use two fingers in the color picker and actually spread color across your lights. So in this case here, if we have our multi-cell wash fixtures like this, and I go and then do some multi-touch, I'm using uh, two fingers on the uh, color picker there, you can see that the fixtures stay as whole fixtures. Each fixture, all of the seven LEDs of each of these fixtures has stayed as a whole color. Because the console knows it's a whole fixture. But that's not the same when it comes to our buttons. Because if this time I'm gonna double tap clear and we'll then go back to controlling our buttons. If we do that same process this time and use multi-touch, the console will spread the colors across the pixels because it knows the difference between a linear fixture and a moving wash fixture, for example. And so it will actually give you different results. Um, if I go and deselect these fixtures, just leaving the first fixture selected, you can see again, I can just spread the colors just across that one button. So the console knows the difference between a linear and a non-linear multi-cell fixture, and therefore you will get different results in the uh, color picker when you fan. Now, the color picker isn't the only place, place where you'll fan, because you can also fan your fixtures in the effects. You can fan effects across your fixtures. So let's just look at one LED button for now. Let's just look at this one and go to my effects. If I go and run an effect, the console knows it's a LED button, and so it's going to run the effect across the pixels of that button. And that's also going to be the case for rainbows, and it's going to be the case for sparkles as well. Uh, if you've got your uh, multi-cell uh, moving light that isn't uh, uh, linear, let's go and turn one of those on. Um, this time, if I run the effects across this fixture, all of the cells are kind of grouped, if you like. The console knows that it's not linear and therefore it groups all of the cells for you. So what we've done there is we've looked at how we can control the fixture as a whole. And we've also actually looked at how we can start to fan colors and effects across the fixture by bringing, simply bringing up the fader and, and applying our colors and effects. But what we can also do is actually drill down and grab control of an individual cell. So let's take our, I'm going to double tap clear again, and let's take our fixture here, our multi-cell moving light. 
I've turned it on, I'm gonna click red, so the whole fixture goes red. But now I just want that center pixel to be blue. So we need the ability to go and actually grab control of an individual cell. To do that, hold your Z slash shift button down and tap the fixtures channel button. And that will then allow you to drill down and grab control of an individual pixel. So you can now see my output window updates to say I'm controlling the fixtures pixels and I've currently got pixel number one. So I've got the fixture number 0.1. So I can now go and make that center pixel a different color. I could continue that process if I want to do shift, tap again, I get to the next pixel, give it a different color. And you can then just go and repeat that process and uh, allow you to go and grab control of all your different pixels one by one. To go back to controlling the whole fixture, double tap. And that will then regroup all of those cells if you like. That is exactly the same process as well on your LED buttons. Go and grab a button. There it is. Hold shift and tap. That will allow you to select the first cell of that button. Give it a color, shift tap again, give it another color, and you can just work on through. And that is a really easy way to go and grab control of the different pixels. Uh, double tap again, and it regroups, allowing you to control all of the LEDs of that fixture together. An extra feature you get with your LED buttons. Now we mentioned the fact that if I go in and I'm gonna double tap clear to start from a fresh state. And if I go and bring these fixtures all up together, like this, I brought all of these fixtures up. And if I were to go to my color picker and go and do a multi-touch, by default, we're spreading at pixel level. But you can use groups as a way of getting blocks of colors on your fixtures. So rather than having to be uh, limited to when you've got LED buttons, having each individual pixel being controlled, if we go to our groups and scroll on down, take a look at all of these different groups, because I've got lots of different fixtures in this show file, you'll see that for the SLE strips, I have all of the E strips, the odd E strips, the evens, and then the first half and the second half. But I then have another set of auto groups, which is at cell level. So I can go and grab all of the odd cells, all of the even cells, the first half and the second half of cells. And I can also grab all of the cells. So if I'm grabbing the fixtures with their cells and then going ahead and using my color picker and doing a multi-touch, I am indeed controlling and spreading my individual colors across every single individual pixel. But if at this time I actually go and say, no, I don't want it to be at cell level, I want it at whole fixture level, and do exactly the same thing in the color picker, this time I'm doing it as whole fixtures. I'm not broken, I haven't broken down individual cells, I'm just fanning those colors as whole fixtures. So you will see that there's a subtle difference there that if you do have multi-cell uh, linear fixtures, you get a normal set of groups and also a cell set of groups, which gives you that additional functionality for if you want to fan at whole level or at pixel level. And the same logic applies with effects. Because at the moment, I've got the whole fixture selected. If I were to go and home these fixtures, and then run a chaser, I'm going at whole fixture level. Whereas, repeat this process, but with cells, so let's go to my whole fixtures, stop the effect from running, select them as cells this time. Remember, double click on a group and it will bring the lights to full. I can now apply exactly the same effect, but this time I'm rippling down at pixel level because I selected the fixtures in a different way. So I hope you found that useful.
that little overview there of all of the various extra controls you've got for when it comes to controlling these multi-cell fixtures. We've looked at how we can control linear multi-cell fixtures and also non-linear multi-cell fixtures and the subtle differences of how we can control those. So have a play with the update, have a play with your, your different fixtures. If you've, if you've got any multi-cell fixtures, get controlling those, let us know how you get on, and if you've got any questions, uh, do just get in touch. Thank you for watching.